These scars date back to 1947, a reminder of Rondria Mamounes' life as a 20-year-old, forced into manual labour by the French colonial powers in Madagascar. That year, he refused to carry on working and paid for it with seven years in jail. Every morning they made us go up the hill. Senegalese riflemen with the French kept guard and whipped us like we were zebus pulling a cart. They made us walk on all fours on rough ground, coming and going. It tore our skin. I still have scars on my knees and back. The Senegalese would say, do you give in? And I'd say, I'd rather die with my fallen brothers. 1947 marked the start of the near two-year Malagasy uprising, one of the earliest anti-colonial revolts in the French colonies. The rebellion was brutally suppressed. Between 30 and 90,000 Malagasis died, either killed or perishing of hunger and cold after fleeing into the forests. Today, the pain from that period still echoes, even among the young. There were traitors who betrayed the Malagasis. Some people hid in the forest. There were children, babies, pregnant women. It makes me so sad. The colonialists shot them and shoved them in holes. They buried them alive. Madagascar would have to wait over a decade before eventually achieving independence on the 26th of June 1960. But for this historian, the island's need for foreign aid means it is not really free. Plus encore qu'en 1960, nous sommes dépendants. We are still dependent. Now, even more than in 1960, we are dependent. In 1960, we were dependent on the former colonial power, France. Now we are still dependent, but not only on France, but also on big international finance organizations. Some tributes to French colonialism still stand on the island, but most have been removed. Up to the 1970s, a statue to the general who had abolished the monarchy on the island overlooked Independence Avenue. In its place today, there is a monument in honour of the original insurgents who began the fight for freedom.